All right, so so after seeing this, uh, after watching all these videos, I, I f it should be very helpful for you to kind of to reflect on the applications of Castigliano's method and how you would do it. Uh, so please take this time to complete this little quiz here on Castigliano's method. Um, so um, I recommend that you stop the video now. Alright, take your time, answer the quizzes, okay, and then I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to write down the answers to the video, uh, to the different solution, different questions, and I'll discuss them for a little bit, but please stop and do this on your own, it's very useful for you to try and, uh, and answer these questions on your own from your, from your memory, um, it'll help you store that information much better than if you uh, just watch me answer the questions, okay? All right, so hopefully you completed the questions and now you're ready to look, go over the answers. All right, so to determine the deflection at any point in the elastic body, you must take the derivative of the total strain with respect to the applied force at that point. So the applied force at that point, we usually denote with the letter PI. All right, so that's the I stands for the location of where that force is being applied. Um, and that should be at the same location where you're trying to find the displacement. Okay? It also should be in the same direction the force should be being applied. It should be within the same direction that you're looking to find the displacement. Secondly, the derivative of the total strain. The second question was the derivative of the total strain energy with respect to the moment is equal to um, the uh, is equal to the slope. Okay. All right. So that's what we're looking to. So the derivative with respect to the moment should be equal to the slope. All right. If there's no load or moment being applied at the point of interest where you want to know theta, uh, the displacement or the slope, what should you do? Um, so if you're looking to find the displacement, you should apply a dummy force. All right. So it's a force that's magnitude is equal to zero. Or if you're looking for the slope, you should apply a dummy moment. All right. So after you do, after you apply these dummy forces and moments, okay, you'll use these to create your moment as a function of x along the length of the beam, all right, and then you can then set your force or your or your dis, or your slope or sorry or your moment equal to zero after you differentiate um, in either of these two integrals here, all right. So once you do your differentiation. You can then set those terms equal to zero, and you can solve the displacement at that point or the slope at that point. The next thing is that if you have for transverse loading beam problems, um, you should define mz as a function of what variables? Um, the main ones that define are the beam length, the applied forces, distributed loads, and a couple moments that are applied along the beam. Okay. Um, then the uh, Question five says, if the function mz of, cha mz of x changes over the beam length, so meaning it's a piecewise function, can you integrate, still integrate from zero to the length of the beam, or do you need multiple equations? Okay, hopefully this is obvious, but the piecewise function means that the function changes as a function of x, and therefore it would not be valid, uh, a single function would not be valid across the whole length of the beam. So you have to break up your integral into, the sec into sections depending on um, how long the um, moment function is applied across. So if it's only valid from zero to half the length of the beam, you have to use the you have to do your integral from zero to half of the length of the beam, and then you have to use another integral to get from length over two to uh, to the length. All right, and the last one is if it, when you're solving statically indeterminate problems, you must rate the reaction forces in terms of the applied slash known forces and moments and the end converted reaction forces. Okay, so all right, so that concludes uh, this lecture on Castigliano's method. Please continue to work on the example problems um, and the homework problems uh, to test your test your knowledge um, and to test your understanding.